Hello again and greetings from Death Valley once more. Uh, this was such a beautiful thought spot. I thought here's why I will fill my Death Valley meditation as well. Here is our image for Death Valley. Kind of appropriate, especially if you hear some of the crows, which are the only birds I've heard around here. Death Valley itself um, is, is in a place of extremes. Um, it is a place where obviously the heat it's the, they call it the lowest and driest place on earth. Uh, and it certainly is, at least in the Western Hemisphere. It is the lowest place in the entire Western Hemisphere. And uh, that includes the, the Badwater Basin, um, which I visited yesterday. And oh my God, is it hot. And then uh, it is also one of the driest places, getting some of the least amount of rainfall uh, in, in the world. And one of the, uh, did I say lowest? Yeah, lowest for the Badwater Basin but lowest below sea level and then hottest. Uh, it's already gotten to be 120 degrees out here this year. Um, yesterday it hit 111 and I know they say it's a dry heat, but <laughs> it's still a heat. Um, last night I stargazed up at what's known as Hell's Gate. Uh, it is the place where most people think the first settlers came and they were they had such a sense of foreboding from the hot air that puffed up from this place that even their horses would not continue they were so scared so they named it hell's gate <clears throat> I'll, I'll leave that there <laughs> i'll leave that there for you to consider but what i was considering while i was up there was how how very much whenever we are in the valleys of death right as 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 the psalmist reminds us, we should fear no evil. That might be extremely difficult if you are watching something within yourself die or watching a loved one die or feeling yourself dying or an opportunity that has died or a friendship or a love affair or whatever it may be. When these things die, they can be like we're in a hell. And I was thinking about that yesterday while I was up at Hell's Gate. Because as I described in my earlier intro, it was there that I saw the moon rise, the full strawberry moon after the, the summer solstice. And what was so amazing about that to me was the, the, this understanding that God was here even at the gates of hell. And indeed, in our faith, we believe that there is nothing that stops Christ from finding us in, in no matter what circumstance we are. Uh, hell, any type of hell, um, the personal ones or the ones that, uh, that are, are happening to us or in this world, um, we believe that, that uh, Christ in the harrowing of hell has gone into hell itself and burst down all of the doors, all of the, all of the cages and the beautiful icons of the scene always have Christ bursting down the gates of hell and there's keys littered uh, at his feet and death itself is subdued and he's pulling people out of their cages, often Adam and Eve, the very first of us who need pulling out as a representation of us being lifted out of our hells. God can be found even in hell. God searches us out even in hell. God won't even let death separate us from God's love. I was thinking yesterday about what's the difference between redemption and resurrection? And this isn't a full thought yet, so you'll, you'll have to tell me your thoughts when you hear this meditation. But in my mind, I think there is a, a place for both redemption and for resurrection in God's purposes. Some things of us and within our lives can go on living and, and will often need to be redeemed, right? Bring brought back to God, bring, being brought back to God over and over again. And then there are some things that need to be resurrected so that new life entirely can come forth. But there is no resurrection without death. There is no resurrection without death. 
And so it really got me thinking yesterday as I'm here in the shadow of the valley of death, thinking about hell and life and death and resurrection and redemption. What in you can you invite to be redeemed and brought back? And what do you need to let have a friendly death? As St. Francis says, he calls death our sister. What can you allow to simply pass so that new life can be there? I'm going to read us a passage that I think speaks to this. This is from uh, John Muir's The Mountains of California. It's called Home to the Mountains. Um, in this, we, we are almost given an invitation to not fear death, to perhaps let something die that needs to die, or just let it happen, to let God help us have these moments of redemption and resurrection without fearing them. And the meditation we're going to do in a bit that's offered along with this is Ego Eradicator, which has these two thumbs out as you're doing swift breathing. You'll see it in the video. And these thumbs are kind of meant to think of the ego as they are solitary. And we are letting the ego sink away a bit. Maybe, maybe today is a good day for the ego to die, right? As the song says. So that something new can be built up in its place. But not just anything. Not just any something new. We let, we let ourselves die, as Paul says, so that Christ can increase more and more within ourselves. Not that we are bad, but rather the part of us that is made to be in God's image, the, part, the true part of ourselves, can be more and more fully embraced in this life. Here is Home to the Mountains from the meditation of John Muir's Nature's Temple, compiled and edited by Chris Highland. Simply close your eyes, maybe take a few deep breaths as you listen to these words. To the timid traveler, fresh from the sedimentary levels of the lowlands, these highways, however picturesque and grand, seem terribly foreboding. Cold, dead, gloomy gashes in the bones of the mountains and all of nature's ways, the ones to be cautiously avoided. Yet they are full of the finest and most telling examples of nature's love. And though hard to travel, none are safer. True, there are innumerable places where the careless step will be the last step, and a rock falling from the cliffs may crush without warning like lightning from the sky. But then what? Accidents in the mountains are less common than in the lowlands. And these mountain mansions are decent, delightful, even divine places to die in, compared with the doleful chambers of civilization. Few places in this world are more dangerous than home. Fear not, therefore, to try the mountain passes. They will kill care, save you from deadly apathy, set you free and call forth every faculty into vigorous, enthusiastic action. Even the sick should try these so-called dangerous places because for every unfortunate they kill, they cure a thousand. May you let your care be killed. May you be saved from deadly apathy and may you be set free to call forth every faculty into vigorous, enthusiastic action. Amen.